Time for sound design. In today's video, I'm going to talk about arrangement, how to go from a four or eight bar loop into a fully arranged three minute track in Ableton Live. Arranging is the art of giving an existing melody musical variety. And when you think about an existing melody, uh, that's a melody you created or something you sampled or it's just a loop that you created. In electronic music or in loop based music you typically first create some kind of loop with a variety of elements like uh, drums, a bass, a melody, a pad and then you want to create variation and you want to create a song that goes from A to B. When you think about like a lot of sort of experimental electronic music like dub techno or uh, soundscapes you don't necessarily always go from a to b you can also just stay at a basically so you can create a mood or an atmosphere and basically stay there but if you think about more typical pop music uh, there's always some kind of progression from one point to another and typically it looks something like you have an intro a verse a pre-chorus a chorus a verse another pre-chorus chorus bridge and another chorus that usually kind of really builds up in tension and energy and I think energy is here the key word so you really want to think about when you think about arranging a song about a timeline so you go from time zero to two minutes three minutes four minutes and you want to create variation sometimes that variation can just be a, a different but on the same energy level but often you want to kind of increase or decrease the amount of energy so you want to add something to create more energy in the track or you want to take something away to create less energy so that's i think the sort of the key words to think about when you think about arranging a track so for this video i picked a track from my latest album cut and paste number 10 on that album is called germanus and it's uh, based around a sample from a uh, old german record link in the description to both my version and the original sample and i created this little diagram to explain to you how uh, this track is built up so as you can see, I broke it down in five parts. So there's an intro that lasts 16 bars. Then there is a part one that is 40 bars and there's variation within those 40 bars, of course. Then there is the break of eight bars, like the typical middle eight, you can say. There's a part two that's a bit shorter than part one, only 32 bars. And there's an outro that's basically eight plus one bars, so nine bars in total. So this track is three minutes and 15 seconds. It's 105 bars at a 100. 29 bpm and what he what i also here try to visualize is the energy level so you can see that in the intro it builds up then in part one this is the part with the most energy and even that builds up to a higher point then there is the break where you kind of drop an energy but then it builds up again uh, part two also builds up in energy but it overall is lower than part one and then in the outro the ending of the song the energy goes down again so let's go now to Ableton and I'll show you for each part how I uh, put this track together. So it consists of 21 tracks. So there's a sample, there's a bunch of synthesizers, a bass, uh, textures. There's one track here with a kick that is used as a sidechain for the pad. So you actually don't hear it. Uh, there's some more textures, a whole section of drums and percussion and some little effects. So let's start with the intro, the first 16 bars of this track. So the idea of these first 16 bars is to really build up the track from uh, scratch. So I start with this pad, which is a D sharp. And then uh, after two bars, the sample comes in and it's uh, being filtered. So the filter slowly opens. It's a low pass filter that opens up. So it sounds like this. So those are the first 16 bars. So basically the first 12 bars is just the sample, uh, another synth that I layered on top. Uh, this one is a drift synthesizer with a short ping on the two and the four with a delay. And then there's this pad all the way throughout. And only in the last four bars from bar 13, 14, 15, 16 
is where uh, more stuff is happening. So the bass is coming in. Um, this other sound here on track seven sounds like this. It's like a percussive sound. And then the actual drum. So the kick, the tom, a snare, kind of like a noise snare, and the maracas. Towards the end of the four bars, there is a reversed sound that sounds like this. And there's a snare roll. So basically the idea of this intro is to introduce the melody and also some of the drums, so not the entire drum uh, section, but the basic, uh, some of the basic sounds of the drum pattern and then end it with this snare roll. And the snare roll really kind of signifies that there is something coming with more energy. So that's the, the goal of this snare roll. So let's now go to part one, which is the section, the main section of the track, which is 40 bars long. And within those 40 bars, there's a lot of different things happening. So let's go to Ableton and I'll show you. So these are the 40 bars. And within that, you can see that there is, uh, the first section is four bars. Then there is eight bars. There's a bridge of two bars, another eight bars. That's the same as the first two. So I, I use these markers here in the top. It says two, two extra synth. There's also two extra synth. Then there's another bridge, so another bridge of two bars, but it's a, a different bridge. And then you go into part that is higher energy. So that's here, it says three, it says another ARP. So I added another ARP. And then part four and five are already, the energy is going down. Let's play the first part. So what I did here is then to add more energy, I added this part, which are chords that are from a sample tuned and kind of uh, messed up. So it sounds like this. And there's a low cut, so it sounds very kind of uh, filtered. So basically the difference between two and two extra synth is just that extra synth and there's an extra clap. So that's the difference. And then there's the bridge and in the bridge, what happens is that I take away elements. So I take away the bass, I take away the synth, I take away this synth, and I take away all the drums except for the kick drum. So that sounds like this. This bridge section works really well because you take so many elements out, but you keep the kick drum. So it's still continue to kind of keep energy, but because you take all the percussion out, it's also way less busy. And then when the drums come in again, it feels like yeah, something is really happening. So this section here where it says two is the same as this previous eight bars. And then it's time for another bridge. And that's also to kind of signify that we're coming to another change. And here I took out all the percussion except the shaker. I kind of made the sample into a choppy reverse-y kind of style. So that sounds like this. And I added also this snare that sounds like this. Together with the shaker and the sample, it really kind of signifies the transition. If you go back to the diagram, you see that this line of energy is rising, and that's really the part that comes now, which is I introduced this new ARP at 16th notes, so that's quite fast, and on its own it sounds like this. And that really gets the energy moving uh, even more. So what happens under here four and five is that the rate of the arpeggio drops from 16 to eight. I take away the sample, the drums stay the same. So for this part, it stays the same. 
but already just by changing the arpeggio speed from 16 to 8 you really feel like it's kind of slowing down but you still have all the drums so it's it's not too big of a step but then when you go to 5 here one of the big changes here is that I introduce a tremolo on this synth so it sounds first like this So it's not a tremolo, but it's not an arpeggio, but it sounds a bit more chopped up. So first you have long notes and then you get shorter notes. And what I do is I only keep the kick and the maracas for all the other percussion goes away. So there's less energy and it's sort of leading up to the middle A to the break. So you still have the main melody, but it is less than before. So that is the intro and the part one. Then we get to the middle eight or the break. And this lasts for eight bars. And here I really wanted to kind of change the, the feel and the energy of the track by introducing a new element, but not going away too far from what I have built so far. So as you can see here in the session, it says here six glitch, that's the, the break part. And most elements are actually muted, but the main thing what I did is that I resampled all the drums in, onto a, se a separate track, that's the orange here, and then I pitched them up one octave, and I reversed so certain parts, certain parts are actually the original pitch, and I kind of chopped it up, so that sounds like this. So I still wanted to keep some kind of percussion element, but I wanted to switch it up from the original a lot. And I have a different video where I talk about how to glitch in Ableton, where I explain this technique more. So when you come from the main drums into this part, it it is a change, but it's not a complete change. So let me play this and the drums. And the other big change what I did is that I want to use the original sample, but I want to kind of slow down the entire track. So what I did is that I stretched it. So if you look at the original sample, there are eight notes and it's 125 BPM. And then I did use the times two functionality here next to BPM. So now it's 250 BPM. And now you see that the notes are quarter notes instead of eight notes. So it just goes twice as slow. And that sounds like this. And by stretching out an audio sample twice as much, you create this kind of artifacts. I also use a different warp mode, so I use the beats warp mode. And then you create these kind of little artifacts, and that is kind of adding to the character of the track. Oh yeah, and then the, what I did is also the pad, it was a D sharp octave 3. I lowered one octave to also lower the energy. So together the, with all the elements, the break sounds like this. So moving on to part two. So after the break of eight bars, there's the part two starting, which is 32 bars in length. And here you want to go back to a more energy, but less energy than part one. And the way I do that is I keep the stretched out sample that are now quarter notes. And I basically create um, the other elements that kind of fit this now, this kind of stretched out melody. Uh, the drums, I bring back some of the drums, not all of them. And I introduce one new element, which is this noise. So there are less drums in this part. The other thing I introduce is this texture of tape noise. So the first eight bars sound like this. There's no bass yet in this part. Then I add this little reverse element here to kind of uh, signify the transition. And then we are now at eight, bring it back, it's called. Um, I'm gonna 
at the tom and the snare and the bass, which is now also stretched out. I mean, it's a mini clip, so I just redraw the bass. So that's the first 16 bars of the 32 bar part two. But as you can see in the diagram, that line goes up. So we want to introduce a bit more energy. And the best way to do that is to get that bus synth that we had in part one back here. But now that everything is stretched out, this is also stretched out again. So on its own, it sounds like this. And then together with the other elements. And then there's only one part left here, and that is, uh, so this is nine final, then there's nine variation, and basically what I do there is at the last four bars, I take out the kick drum uh, on every beat to kind of start thinking about getting to the, uh, the ending of the song. So let me play it from here. And that brings us to the end of the song, the um, outro, which is eight bars in length plus one bar for the till, basically. What I want to do here is kind of like, yeah, create an ending to the song that is kind of satisfying. What I did is that I stretched the original sample once more. Here the sample is stretched once at 250 BPM, but for the outro I stretch it again, so it's now over 500, which means that each note is now half a note. So it went from a quarter note to a half a note, and that sounds like this. And as you can hear, that creates even more artifacts in the sample. The analogy is kind of like a turntable that you slow down, so it slowly comes to a stop, and that's kind of how I see it here. For the rest, there's the pads and the texture in the outro, but all the other elements, all the percussion, all the melodic elements and the bass, everything is muted. And in order to make this um, sample that stretched twice now come to a stop, is I uh, introduce a redux effect. So I lower the sample rate, so you get this kind of glitchy digital effect. So let me play it. So that's how I kind of fade out a sample without using an actual volume fade. And then the last bar is just a um, sort of to have the tail the noise run out. So yeah, this is a quick rundown of how I like to arrange my songs. I think once you get really into the arranging part, it's actually a lot of fun. Like building the initial melody and the initial loop is fun, but uh, making it into a full fledged track that lasts for three, four minutes can actually be a lot of fun and I think when you work with this approach of first a rough structure a rough skeleton of the track and then you kind of fill it in it feels like less overwhelming and you get a better idea of like what you need to add do you need to add a synth or can you just change an existing synth um, stretch it out change the melody add more notes add less notes to create less more or less energy let me know in the comments how you uh, work with uh, arranging your music in Ableton Live, what kind of tips and tricks do you have? As always, keep making music. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.